Hello, everyone. I'm Shreya, and I will be presenting the work that I've done so far for my PhD topic, which is the application of iPSC-derived hepatocyte-like cells uh, for hepatotoxicity testing. I'm working at Kailuv in Belgium, and my uh, thesis promoter is Professor Catherine Verfei, and my co-promoter is uh, Professor Mark Cronin from LGMU uh, Liverpool. Uh, briefly, my project aims are as follows. Uh, so at first I do the differentiation to hepatocyte-like cells that I refer to as HLCs from now. Uh, so at first we do the genome engineering to create uh, uh, what is known as the 3X lines in our lab. So we insert uh, gene cassettes uh, that uh, improve the differentiation. Uh, this is followed by the characterization of the HLCs derived from this line, which will be referred to as SBAT23X. So this is derived from the SBAT2 lines that were selected by the N3 consortium. Uh, this is followed by uh, acute dose response. So I treated with the N3 compounds and uh, did the dose, dose response studies on them. Uh, and also the treatment of uh, idiosyncratic drug-induced liver injury uh, compounds. Uh, this is done using uh, the treatment with the compounds and the co-treatment with uh, cytokines. Um, this is followed by the tempo seek on selected compounds uh, uh, with different concentrations with or without co-stimulation and analysis of this data. Then there is the validation and benchmarking. So where I use a report alliance for detection of toxicity, a timeline of expression changes in relevant genes, and the benchmarking of the model. Uh, so at first, it's the genome engineering to make what is known as the SBAT23X line. So I start off with SBAT2 line like everyone else, um, uh, and then um, insert uh, three factors, three genes, uh, HNF1-alpha, PROX1, and FOXA3. Uh, we have shown in our lab that uh, the insertion of these genes improved the differentiation of the uh, uh, of the genes of the cells to hepatocyte-like cells when uh, induced using uh, doxycycline. So at first we use a zinc finger nuclease to insert um, a flipase recognition site uh, flanked cassette uh, consider, uh, consisting of uh, hegrovicin TK selection. Um, then after this selection is done, uh, we flip out uh, this cassette uh, with a plasmid which contains the uh, flippase and um, the genes of interest and uh, select it further until we have the line which consists, uh, which consists of the cassette. Uh, then these lines are differentiated to uh, hepatocyte-like cells using this protocol that we have in our lab. It is cytokine-based and the medium is changed every two days and uh, the maturation goes on up to day 40, although you can uh, stop the differentiation at day 30 and do your treatments uh, or whatever. And uh, you, if you wish, you can also keep the cells in culture and differentiating up to day 60 with no loss of uh, phenotype. Um, so we use a uh, medium that we make in the lab known as liver differentiation medium, which is based on uh, DMAM uh, F12. Um, we use doxycycline to induce the changes and the cytokines mentioned in the colors. Uh, but uh, we also use DMSO for uh, increasing the maturity of the hepatocytes. But since DMSO itself has an effect, uh, uh, a metabolic engineering was done on this medium, uh, which was published earlier this year uh, from uh, one of our uh, previous PG students. Um, and uh, in that, he discovered that uh, if we remove the DMSO and instead uh, engineer the medium uh, and add eight amino acids and supplemental glycine, then uh, the differentiation proceeds uh, just as, I mean, in fact, even better, and the cells mature uh, metabolically. So the morphological changes uh, are shown here uh, at each stage from IPSC to endoderm to hepatoblast and uh, finally to hepatocyte-like cells in uh, under the light microscope. Uh, then I did the characterization of uh, the hepatocytes. Um, so the HLCs express uh, CYPs and uh, e, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin, albumin, HNF1-alpha, and unfortunately also alpha-fetoprotein, which is a, a fetal marker which you can see is uh, not very highly present in the primary hepatocytes, PHH, uh, but um, in, in the HEPG2, for comparison, it is uh, definitely present. Um, but the other markers are comparable in expression to uh, primary hepatocytes and uh, in general higher than HEPG2. 
that was with qPCR of course um, and this is with immunofluorescence you can we confirm that uh, there is expression of cyp3a4 hnf4 alpha which is a hepatocyte nuclear factor uh, and also alpha fetoprotein so it appears to be a bit of a mixture the uh, uh, majority because um, uh, the cells which have more of uh, CYP3A4 expression appear to have a bit less of um, AFP expression. So AFP is the fetal marker. So um, it appears to be slightly heterogeneous in um, maturity. Uh, they also secrete albumin uh, as uh, shown using ELISA and uh, uh, they also metabolize BFC, which is a substrate of CYP3A4. So they have CYP3A4 activity, which is higher than HEPG2, but uh, about half as much as uh, primary hepatocytes plated for 12 hours. And uh, albumin is about one third of uh, primary hepatocytes um, uh, plated for 12 hours. So the maturity is not as much as uh, primary hepatocytes yet. Uh, next, I did the chemical exposures of uh, the first 10, which are um, in three compounds and these concentration ranges, and also the ideally compounds, which I'll explain uh, in further, uh, explain further. Um, and no significant toxicity was found for uh, these chemicals, gentamicin, valproic acid, lead chloride, busulfan, uh, cerium uh, dioxide nanoparticles, and pamidronate. Uh, in one of the methods uh, that I used as a urine, uh, I did have, uh, I had no toxicity in uh, doxorubicin and cyclosporin, but at the higher concentration with LDH, I had a bit, bit of uh, cytotoxicity, but uh, I could not confirm this for higher concentrations because I'd already reached the uh, limit of uh, solubility. Um, and these are all 48-hour uh, acute exposures. Then I also had uh, a very nice uh, dose response curve with paraquat and amiodarone, which are well known to be hepatotoxic. Um, and further, uh, then, and I had also a small focus on uh, idiosyncratic drug induced liver injury, which is basically um, like DILI, but uh, it's not really uh, dose, uh, dose dependent always. And it's uh, it tends to be patient specific. So if patient A has it, it's not necessary that at the same dose, patient B will also have it. So it tends to be really uh, dependent on the environment of the liver. So it can be due to several reasons, such as uh, uh, pre-existing disease, uh, metabolic syndrome, uh, epigenetics, um, inflammatory episode uh, so for uh, because of uh, alcohol consumption, uh, NASH or NAFLD and co-medication. However, uh, in most cases, there is the presence of uh, an inflammatory uh, state in the liver, which is sort of uh, synergizing with the chemical effect to give a, a higher uh, toxicity than it normally would have at that concentration. So um, there seems to be the involvement of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine production. So some groups have tried to model it using either HEPG2 cells or primary hepatocytes and try to demonstrate the synergism of drug and the cytokines, uh, such as TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, um, or even uh, lipopolysaccharides. Um, so I tried to do that here in my cells uh, using these.